Hello, it's Saturday the 5th of um, February, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the response on Bandcamp writing. I really appreciate it, folks. And um, even though the number, which I won't state, was a, a fraction of the number of people who watch me on a regular basis, I really appreciate it. I do. And um, I'll be getting the uh, physical copies out um, by Monday because I ran out of mailers. Um, I'm pleased and surprised at the number of orders for physical copies that I got. Um, it's helpful. What happened yesterday was helpful. I hopefully it was helpful to some other musicians. On Bandcamp, among other things, you can you can get a readout of um, a real time readout of how you're doing, and so um, I like to see how um, Nebraska is doing on Bandcamp. And uh, yesterday, the top sellers. Yesterday, according to this morning, were this person, some black metal looking stuff from Nebraska Drellnock. Then this video game sounding music called Nano Ray. For some reason, that's really popular. Third is Bright Eyes. And then fourth is Me. That feels pretty good, folks. That's not huge numbers, but seeing my placement in in relation to others I see the reality of the kind of numbers that people are actually doing period the future still actual number I don't know because those orders go direct to FPE so I don't know how many people bought future still yesterday but it looks like we had some sales thank you folks and also thank you folks for um Giving me, the, giving me the feedback, letting me know how much you like the album. Um, Dwayne, if you see this, thank you much. I got a call from Grapefruit Records yesterday that a customer, turns out it's a person named Dwayne, bought two of my albums that I put on consignment down there, and uh, he wanted me to sign them. And so, went down and did that. I have two more of my rarer albums on sale at um, Grapefruit. I have Derek number three with the red cover with the eye they have on there for 80 bucks. It won't be there long, but um, it was um, it's just very, very satisfying and um, thank you so much. So, of course, while I'm down at Grapefruit, that, day, that, that store is dangerous to me. Unlike Homer's and Recycled, I have to dig to find things. At Grapefruit, there's too much. I can't buy everything I want there, and um, it's just my kind of store. So I used the money that I got from the sales and I took FPE gave me five copies of um, Future Still. I kept one sealed for myself. I took two down to FPE and uh, down to Grapefruit Records. So Grapefruit Records told me that the um, distributors are still um, saying that they don't have it yet. So um, maybe FPE is having um, some difficulty uh, getting records to the distributors. I'm going to check on that today. But there's two copies of Future Still on sale down at Grapefruit Records here in Omaha. They don't seem to, they go fast. I like that. Very pleasing. So I picked up some records yesterday. Because um, we had a wonderful conversation, uh, me and Mike and Simon Joyner. Do you all know who Simon Joyner is? He's he's a he's a figure in Nebraska independent music, and we talked. Besides um, uh, the commission here, you know, I've known uh, Simon forever, but we've never played. And I said, Simon, I, that would mean a lot to me personally to do some music with you. 
I've known you all this time and I've played shows on the same bill with you, but I've never played with you. I'd like to do that. And so he agreed, yeah, we'll do something. Yeah, I'd love that. He said he'd love that too. Kind of funny, it never happened. But they had something, Paredu, Paredu, if you happen to see this. I thought of you when, when these, <laughs> when I saw these in the used section. I said, oh man, I've been after these. I had them, I had this when it first came out and, and sold it too soon. I got some Glen Branca on. Lesson number one, Glen Branca, the... Uh, composer from New York um, who uh, did the thing with guitars, a hundred guitars, um, absolutely was a big influence on what Sonic Youth and a lot of New York, well, around the world, people did. This is brilliant. And, um, you know, when I got it, I sort of got it, but I sold it. I also had Theoretical Girls by, that had Glenn Branca in it. Now, that is real hard to find now. Of course, if I start talking about the records that I used to have that are really rare now that I sold before I knew what I was doing. <laughs> this is the one. Symphony Number no. 6 by Glenn Branca. Oh, my God. This is a head kick. This is fantastic. This is really intense, and he really gets it together on this one. This one just gets to the point where it's pummeling and it's just pushing and then it's funky like Miles Davis kind of funk. Seriously, they get to the point and I can just see in my mind Glenn Branca directing the musicians like there it is, now you're getting it and he's with his whole body um, moving showing the band this is the movement that yeah you are moving this correctly this is brilliant glenn bronca symphony number no. six when i posted it yesterday i said this is this takes you somewhere while seemingly going nowhere and the other one i got which i still need to dive into is symphony number no. one tonal plexus this is a reissue symphony number no. six is an original this is a, a reissue. This is some real good shit, people. It's um, it's the sort of thing that can change your consciousness while you're it, when you get immersed into it. Seriously, it can change your perception while you're listening. I got a few more. I was like, I said, I had to stop, you know, because it's like, shh, too much good stuff. Picked this up yesterday, and this is real tasty. Carl Berger with Dave Holland and Ed Blackwell. Transit on Black Saint. No, this is not a fire date. This is a consummate composition date where and they're just playing like like there's no tomorrow regarding taste and connection I love all three musicians but Ed Blackwell do you know his drumming he is unique and he definitely comes from the New Orleans school and you can hear it like you don't hear in other drummers. Playing the New Orleans thing, the Creole thing, whatever the right word is for it, like those bands that play in the streets on there, getting that rhythm is not easy. And um, I played with C.J. Chenier, Clifton Chenier's son, and um, it was paid to do a, a gig with him. So... Um, I, just like with reggae, I learned hard directly from folks who know. And he let me know, man, I can't do nothing with that motherfucking bass. <laughs> he said, this is what you're supposed to do. And so Ed Blackwell has this swing in his drumming that is rare. 
and it's very lively. If it weren't the fact that Berger and Holland were so good, this album alone for Ed Blackwell's drumming, I would recommend. It's incredible. I rarely see records by Ashra Temple in the wild, so I was chuffed <laughs> to beat the band yesterday, to use old folks' <laughs> terminology, slang. Gin Rosé at the Royal Festival Hall. Ashra Temple. Really cool with pictures of Julian Cope hanging out with them, looking all fried on the inside. <laughs> it's 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 Ashra, Manuel Goching, and Klaus Schultz, and this is floaty. It's beautiful. It's very melodic and beautiful. I have several Klaus Schultz albums, and they can be spacey and kind of meandering. And he admitted it that he, for years, couldn't get the same thing out, couldn't get the same sound out of his synthesizers. From one day to the next, so it's all exploration that you're hearing. He's very good at it. But it can be tedious if you're not in the right mood. Another record I was extremely happy to find because I don't have any except for a compilation. I finally have a Davy Graham album, The Guitar Legend. What a goofy picture. This is his 1969 album, apparently the last album he made for Decca. He had a run of records for Decca. Um, groundbreaking records regarding his guitar playing and you can hear it on here he was something else um, very influential on the acoustic British folk jazz scene he can his playing is just really really incredible but this cover to me just exemplifies what artists would have to stoop to at times when you're involved with large record companies who are trying to sell product. It's um, not a very flattering cover and he probably had to do it, maybe he wanted to do it, but this is really good. He does some covers on here like the Beatles and stuff, but the instrumentals are just brilliant and you can hear his artistry and where all these other guitar players got these ideas for this finger picking and stuff. It's really good. This is one a, a band that is kind of part of my internal history of music. And it's not so much that this is stuff that I really like listening to now, but it's stuff that I wanted to know about at the time and, and never could find the record. So pick this up used. Swedish, I believe, Thradgrass Oxdenar. This is like maybe their third album. And this is, I can't say the, I don't know how to pronounce the title. What you hear here on this is hippie happening in Sweden. This is the alternative underground thing in its nascent form people creating a counterculture and this is the sound of it so it's very jammy things repeat a lot take a long time to develop it sounds like the guys are just starting to learn how to play so for me this has more his historical significance than something I'm going to be playing a lot on the other hand however when I saw this in the store, I was like, whoa, really? Because it's a, it's a new reissue on Ictus. Very important label. And I said, Simon, is Ictus going again? He says, I think so. Wow. Clangs by Steve Lacey and Andrea Centazzo. Duets with sax, drums, percussion, all sorts, pocket synthesizer. These folks really engage you. They're involved in an exchange and a conversation involving these instruments. And be, beyond their skill level, which is high, they listen and there's a sensitivity. And so this is just wow. This is really, really good. Clangs. I love Steve Lacey also, anyway. 
This is a reissue, but I got the first Don Caballero album for respect. Love this band, saw them live. Had an interesting challenge trying to have a conversation with Damon Che, but I did. I tried to talk to him. He tried to talk circles around me. <laughs> it was fun. This music is great. His drumming is something else. A very unique way of approach, approaching the drums. When you watch him play, it looks like it shouldn't be working. The way he sits at the drums and everything. His playing is brilliant. Yeah, I, Grapefruit is the bomb. All these records are just fantastic. Complete Communion, Don Cherry. Man, live in Stuttgart. I played in Stuttgart, had a good time there. This is again with Carl Berger, Gatto Barbieri, both Stephen Aldo Romano. Just like that cover. And this is a, also limited edition, it turns out, numbered. Only 500 copies. Yeah, this is this is fire. This is fire. Mm. Now, one of the few things um, that I bought in the new section was this, and this is the last thing I bought. I didn't know exactly about this, but what this is, this is um, ESP Summer. And it's a collaboration between uh, one of the guys from Pale Saints and Warren from His Name is Alive. This is strange, but but I like it. I, it all, but it seems also kind of weird and and um, druggy, almost like they were almost on too many drugs to be doing this. But it's interesting. Clear vinyl, somewhat. Akin to the sound of both the bands, Pale Saints and His Name is Alive. Strange. It also has this weird poster or whatever on the inside. Both sides. But that caught my interest and I said, well, I like both of those bands. I love the way this is presented. I don't know what this is. I'm glad I got it. ESP Summer. Look at that, that's cool. I like them. I'm sure you like that. So that's what's up, people. <clears throat> I hope that other musicians and artists that I know did well on Bandcamp Friday. Um, I'm always cheering for um, the Newhouse camp, Dave Newhouse and friends. Those people seriously feel like friends, even though I have not met them in person. They really feel like part of my circle. Carla, Jerry King. Brett Harold Hart seems to have left the, the building. He's not on social media anymore, but uh, I made several recordings with him. He was part of the crew. It seems to have disappeared. But all those people, Eric Kearns, all those people, the names escape me, but all oh, you wonderful people. So, have a good weekend, and again, thank you very much for your support. It really does make a difference. One of the things I'm thinking is that if I could possibly have another um, turnout similar to this or better next month, then I will um, endeavor to um, manufacture some CDs. Vinyl is what I really like, but I'm looking, excuse me, I'm looking at the reality you know, of um, the way things are right now. And making records is difficult. So I'd probably have a lot better luck just doing some limited run CDs. And that's what I could do with the money that I make from sales here. So thanks again, people.